So we're here at the IBC here with B and H. Hey. And who are you? Uh, my name is Oliver Covert. I work in the marketing department. Um, I do a lot of our trade shows. And here's the GH5, Panasonic GH5. So how many did you sell of these? Oh, you don't have to, I, don't, I don't have the number, but a lot, a lot. A lot? It's, a, it's, it's popular? It's a popular camera. It's got some uh, really unique features, like especially the optical image stabilization built into the um, into the sensor housing. It's basically like a steady cam. It you can works just had a really handheld. well. Exactly. It feels like a Steadicam. Exactly. It has all these amazing features. It's like they didn't hold back. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Um, and so that's, I, I talk to a lot of people who do video blogs or just, you know, want a camera that um, uh, is good for just small independent filmmaking. Uh, you don't need to necessarily buy a Steadicam or some, or like a gimbal for it. Uh, it works really well, especially that feature. Yeah. It's a. Uh, film, like independent filmmakers could make movies with this. Oh, Easy. Absolutely. They could totally absolutely. make a movie. And it's just two thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, from B and H, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly correct. Because you're in the U.S., you're in New York. Yes. What is B and H? What is B and H? It's like just one store in New York. Or it is. Work? Oh, it's more than that. I mean, B and H is the largest uh, photography store in the world. Um, it's a whole city block on Thirty Fourth and Ninth Avenue um, in Manhattan, New York, um, and that store is still a. That's the tip of the iceberg for what the company is. I mean, we do a lot of sales online. So e-commerce is huge for us. Uh, we do international shipping. Um, we're a billion-dollar company. Billion-dollar company. Billion-dollar company. And uh, how old is B&H? You know, uh, it's like 1970s. And it was always a camera store. It started. It, it kept as, growing, growing. Exactly. Growing. It started as a photography store first, um, and then that kind of translated into video in the 80s, um, and it's just been growing and growing. So now we have we we provide a lot of. Um, professional equipment, but also consumer electronics as well. And people can buy a, a GH5, which is kind of like semi-affordable. Sure. And then, uh, but then you have all, everything. You have all these big ones too. Yeah. So uh, we're showing a couple, a few DSLRs, but then some other cinema and broadcast cameras as well. The bigger one here. This is a Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, a 4.6K version. How much is 4.6K dollar? How much does it cost? <laughs> That's the uh, yeah, we sell this for between uh, 4,000 and 5,000 dollars. Yeah. Uh, for the body alone. Uh, this is the new Zeiss uh, CP3 cinema lens as well, affordable. You have all lens. kinds of bundles with. Cool uh, lenses? Not, not with the lenses. Generally, you, you purchase everything uh, separately. You can work directly with the salesman um, at B&H uh, or online. Why do people say this is a cool camera? Do you know? Say again? Why do people say that's a good one, the it's, camera? Well, the price point uh, for what it provides is yeah. amazing. So that's the, one of the biggest factors is the price point on it. Um, it's the, the best that Blood Magic has, right? Uh, yeah, I would say in, in terms of a uh, cinema camera. And absolutely. what are these two slots right here? Uh, these are for the uh, CFAS cards, the media that it records on. It also has dual SD and two CFAS. Correct. Uh, but you, can you record uh, lots of different high bit rates and everything? Absolutely, and also proxy in the SD. So if you're going to record 4K uh, cinema DNG raw, uh, you would want to use the C fast. And then we we go over to right here. This is a is it a C two hundred? That's that is absolutely that's correct. the one that Canon had that could do four K. Exactly. That was the the one that was a good codec. Now they have another one that just came out, right? Yes, correct. But that was the one that people needed to have. How much is that one? Um, I'd have to double check the price. I don't have them all it's memorized. A, I'm just guessing six, seven, eight thousand. Uh, probably less than that. Yeah. Probably in the four to five thousand dollar range 45. as well. Um, and then we have the uh, Shape um, C200 camera rig as well, and the Shape Follow Focus Pro on here. Um, Why is it like this? Uh, this is so. This is kind of a, a, an example of a, a rig that you could build up, and this applies to the C200, but also pretty much any type of cinema camera. You start with the body, you add a lens, um, you add a base plate uh, for it, and with the base plate, now you have the ability to add accessories on, such as a Follow Focus. You could put a matte box on the front. A uh, cheese plate on the back with a battery mount and a uh, larger battery. So this will power uh, the camera plus many other accessories for quite a while. So people who like these kind of cameras and they live in New York, they must feel like a kid in the in the B and H candy store, right? Yeah. It's got to be a fun place to go. It's I, it's. Or is it time limit? When you enter the store, you have to get out. No, no, not at all. You, no, you can absolutely spend all the time that you want in there. Uh, you know, these cameras like this in the store, like people can just absolutely. try them. Absolutely, we have uh, many more in the pro video department. We have um, somewhere between twenty and thirty cameras on display. Uh, and if you go upstairs to the phot photography department, I couldn't even give you a number. There is a and lot of cameras and lenses. Experts. The best. The guys at the B&H that are in the store, they really know their stuff, right? The, I would guess. Uh, absolutely. The, yeah. key, the key, the thing that makes B&H really unique is that we don't get paid commission. Salespeople don't get paid commission. We are just passionate about what we do. We're all active shooters, photographers, uh, cinematographers, so you directors. you the truth. You would say that's better than that. Exactly. Because, I, because I'm passionate about this equipment. 
and I don't have an incentive to upsell you by any means. So we give uh, we give the best information that we can. Nice. And uh, these are uh, this is very kind. Of, that's that's high end stuff. This, right yeah. Here. So as you can see, it kind of starts lower in the DSLRs and kind of goes up in the price range. Uh, this is a Sony FS7. This is a really good cinema camera. Um, also can be used for a broadcast or documentary. Is it the Mark II? Well. Exactly correct. This is so the that's Mark II. just only one year old or something. Like that. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of recent, right? Yes, it's, it came out pretty recently. But people really wanted to see an upgrade on the FS5. The FS5. Is that is, right? It's people likely coming as well. Yeah. The yeah, FS5 is a really good option for if you need um, uh, something like the FS7, but a smaller and scaled down version. And is this a super expensive lens? No, it's actually not. So this is the Fujinon, uh, this is the brand new MK series of lens. It's a native E-mount. It was pretty much developed for uh, for the Sony cameras. Um, this is a, uh, a cinema zoom lens. Uh, normally cinema zoom lenses go for thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Fujinon developed this, uh, so it is affordable. We sell this for about four thousand dollars. So that's huge. Eighteen to fifty-five focal length, um, and now Crozial on the other side here. Crozial is coming out with the MK Zoom. This is a servo zoom motor for this lens specifically, which is huge. Uh, you'll be able to um, once it's released, you'll be able to control it via the uh, the zoom toggle uh, on the Sony handle. Um, so with that set up, with the shoulder mount, um, with the servo, the Crozial servo zoom uh, kit, you'll be able to have a fully functional cinema, but also broadcast camera at the same time. How much for everything? Oh, well, for everything Around. on here, I'd say you're looking at uh, eighteen thousand dollars or so. And, Twenty thousand. Uh, so that means uh, independent filmmakers could probably. They would get, borrow one of those this or is, buy one this and start making movies. This set, absolutely. This set, setup is um, one of the most versatile, I would say, for a lot of the cameras that we offer. Um, it's not just a cinema camera. It's not just a broadcast camera. It's not just a documentary camera. It can do all of the above. And uh, here's a Vericam, but I think one camera that you're soon going to be selling gangbusters is the EVA-1, right? The EVA-1, absolutely. That's going to be... that's not behind there, but... No, we don't have it on display, unfortunately. That's going to be popular, right? Yeah. People the, are really the, excited about that, because it's, uh, it's uh, even more affordable than here, correct, kind of. Correct. It's cinema. Correct, exactly. Yeah, the EVA-1, a lot of people are looking forward to. So, how many independent filmmakers are there in New York? That's like, buying question. the cameras at your place? and. Um, make movies in the streets and stuff. And I would say somewhere between a hundred to three hundred thousand. There's a lot of us out there. <laughs> Lots of filmmakers. There's a lot. Yeah, we we like to connect with them. Uh, BNH likes to sponsor film festivals and um, get involved in uh, uh, independent filmmaking in New York. And just to check over here, you have a. Is this the best way to do video editing, or what are you showing here? A um, few different things. So um, <laughs> we're sh we're showing some Intel systems um, and the power. So right here we have a um, color, the Autopano. Uh, uh, VR stitching software um, and we're running it on an Intel computer um, so you're able to take uh, this was all recorded with the GoPro this Omni. This is a nice 4K monitor? Yeah absolutely, uh, made by BenQ. Um, uh, not too expensive right BenQ? No, exactly, but this is an affordable option. Pretty big? Yes correct. How big is this? 32? Uh, 32. Um, yeah so with this software uh, you can uh, you can live stitch um, uh, uh, VR cameras together um, and, and sell you sell desktops? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we sell uh, custom workstations. Uh, we sell um, pre-configured desktops as well. Nice. And a whole bunch of other stuff around here. A lot of other stuff going on. This is just some more. Um, uh, this HP Z840. It's a post-production workstation as well. Um, and a Corsair One, another computer. So we're just kind of showing uh, some of the computer systems. Stuff warranty stuff. or mm -hmm. uh, can people return stuff if they're not happy? How does it work? Yeah, yeah, we have a 30-day return policy on 95% of the things that we sell. Um, yeah, our customer service is the best that I've ever experienced. That's the first thing, uh, the first review I always get from customers. Our customer service is, likes to make it as easy and painless as possible if you need to return How something. How about this idea of uh, Europeans buying from you and getting it shipped over? Mm -hmm. Because that's totally set up, your, yep. your website, basically everything is available for Not everything, uh, I mean, a lot, a lot. Of, it depends. So some things we are contractually obligated to sell within the, within the U.S. Um, other most, things. Most things they um, can just and you automatically add the the VAT. Exactly. Exactly shipping, correct. Yeah. So you if just make it easy. If we're shipping to Europe, um, uh, you can set the country that you like it shipped to. Uh, you will automatically uh, calculate the VAT. You can prepay it and expedite it through customs. And it only goes in three days or something. Somewhere between right? three and five business days. It's pretty quick. So people anywhere in Europe, yeah, can get this stuff at U.S. prices. Yes. Which 
often is cheaper than yeah. in Europe? Yeah, generally. You do have to calculate the, the shipping um, and, and the VAT as well. Um, but you, often it might be a better deal to get it there? Yeah, it, How about the, it all depends. One thing that people might be worrying about is if you're in New York, if there's an issue, yep. what happens? Yeah, so it depends on the sp specific product. Um, some products are a little bit more difficult. You might have to send it back to the U.S. to um, to fulfill that warranty. Uh, other things, depending on the company, um, uh, you they may be able to work with you internationally uh, if you need if you need Is a warranty. Is there like fix. a little uh, icon or a sticker that says, let's say, if I bought this GH5, and somehow you had to deal with Panasonic sure. that. Anybody who bought it through you could still get it serviced or something mm -hmm. in Europe mm -hmm. so how much did within the... Yeah, it's, uh, it, there's, there's nothing on our website that shows specifically um, that this is an international warranty or a U.S. warranty. That's something that you could uh, speak with a salesperson about. All right, cool. So, lots more cameras coming. Hopefully, there's going to be a A7S Mark III. Yeah, I've coming. heard, I've heard busy, stories. Right? Yep. Or A9S. People are waiting for all mm -hmm. kinds of mm -hmm. uh, potential cameras to come out. and. Uh, B&H, you'll have them. You'll have everything. Thank you. All right.